Hello everyone, I'm Mackenzie Mitchell and welcome to Threads. Today we're in Napa Valley, California and we're diving into the closets of two iconic trailblazers. They're actresses, professional wrestlers, podcasters, TV stars, moms, and twins. They are WWE Hall of Famers and have been featured on some of the biggest stages in television, Nikki and Brie Garcia. Is there someone today in wrestling that you guys love their style? Oh, that's a good someone question. Kind of, I feel like I love Liv Morgan. I was gonna, I knew you were gonna say yeah, that. Liv Morgan <laughs> is definitely my favorite. Like I always like when she, what she comes out in and I feel, I feel her vibe. Like I feel yeah. like I look at her gear and I'm like, oh, I, I can rock that. Yeah, more. yeah. I, um, I love Anna J. I think she brings really beautiful, and I want her butt. Um, and I love her different looks that she's done. I love it, especially when she does um, the stuff with the fishnet and all that kind of look. I love that look. And then I love Rhea's entire look of what she's transformed in. The hair, the makeup, incredible, and the outfits. And someone with that kind of character and looks, she actually changes up the gear, but in a perfect way. I'm like, she's killing it. Yeah. For sure. yeah. So, Brie, you brought your um, Hall of Fame dress. Can we yes. pull it out? Yes. So, this is my one that Another I wore Gwen Russell. Stefani. Oh, no. <laughs> in spell. As you can tell, Gwen Stefani is my fashion <clears> icon. <throat> And what's cool is um, when I was on stage next to Brie, we have the same material in our outfits because I wanted um, the same designer. I was like, I want a jersey made into a gown. Right. And, oh, the train. And didn't it have a train a little bit a train, on it? Yeah. yeah. She did a long old train. And what was great is it was easy to remove. So when I wanted to do other stuff with it in the future, um, we removed it, but it was so badass. That was so cool. Well, as Breeze's Gwen Stefani, do you have anyone that's your inspiration in like the Hollywood scene, maybe yeah. musician, etc.? I know. J-Lo. Yeah. I would always I go mean, look at j I mean, iconic though, right? Yeah. You have to. Totally. J-Lo and Beyonce would be two that I'd always go look for inspo, especially with these kind of looks. Um, they just... Their looks for me. And J-Lo's my inspo in that since I've been in middle school. Yeah. Um, her and then I loved Gwen stuff, but J-Lo was always like, just because she always wore it right for curves. And then when Beyonce came onto the scene, she was doing the same. And what I really loved then about Beyonce as I was doing wrestling was Beyonce was really good about the sparkles and shine. Like, bedazzled. bedazzled. And then someone who had great thick thighs, like she really knew how to put it together where I was always so embarrassed to show my thighs. But then when Beyonce started to come out with her outfit, she gave me confidence to be like, oh yeah, like I look. I can rock that. I can do that. And that is hot and looks good. So those are my two, yeah. Instos. So then let's fast forward a little bit to Total Divas, Total Bellas days. Yeah. How were you guys planning your looks for a different form of television, for reality TV? Yeah. And sometimes you guys were gone for like weeks or, or stints at a time away from your home. How are you packing for that? So I think that's when I became obsessed with maxi dresses because they were the easiest to pack and to have multiples of, um, to have all these different looks. But it was fun. You and I, like Brie and I were so good. I felt like we'd spend a day before leaving on like a long adventure. We'd be texting each other or we'd be together putting all these outfits together. Like you had to see how our bags were packed. It was like strategy. Strategy, be. yes. Strategy. And we love fashion, so I'm like, because we would package them individually and in like bags. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, and the accessories. Yep. In bags and the accessories. When we start doing these yeah. block bags and because have them we're so all busy the on the road, you don't have time to think. I don't want to think. I don't want to think right now. So let's 
but I want to be fashionable. I want to have my accessories. If I'm wearing a top with like a pop of blue, I want to make sure I have these blue earrings and like, and then shoes. That's why we became obsessed with Tumi that had like the shoe section because we knew we were packing like 10 pairs of shoes. Yeah, right? So much. How did you select your look for the season cover? Because there were several season covers. How did you select that look particularly? No, those were stylist. Okay. And they would already know their mood board. So they would come in and they're like, this is like you had 10 outfits we'd all try. Like everyone had their own racks. Actually, it was amazing. They would treat us like stars. We'd come in and everyone have their own section and everyone flowed and was their personality. Of course, Brie and I's were always like identical until like we stopped doing that after a bit, right? But we were like, why do we always do the same thing? For the first few, right? Yeah, actually, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. I never thought they were my bag. But I remember season one of Total Divas wearing those like blue, tiny And then the black with the silver around. That was season two. But those were hot. I liked no, all that. That one I liked better. That doesn't feel like you. Yeah, felt like me. And that's that's your identity. That's your representation then for the entire season. So you're like, I'm stuck to this. I I've committed now right. to this. Totally. I just started asking them, like, can you pull boho outfits for me for these big shoots? Because that's who I am and that's who everyone sees in this season. The she Bellas was, one, the total Bellas, they were covers. And we had bigger voices, so we got to say more what was us. And they started to know us better. What was funny when I think at the beginning, everyone's mindset was such, they only knew us as wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So whatever they kind of saw in the ring or in pre-tapes, they were like, oh, that's them. And it is funny because when I look back in wrestling, even when we were doing pre-tapes, we would just buy clothes so sexy in a specific look because that's the wrestling industry made you feel that way. Like you had the sparkle bras with like, a, uh, you know, the dress. And so you guys were just going in and like, okay, I think this is cute. Or someone was telling you what to particularly buy. Like you no, guys we were just doing it. it all on your own. Yeah. And, and hoping it worked. Fingers crossed, right? right? Yeah. There's more fingers crossed for wrestling. Well, we you don't have a lot of money. money. They're like $20 dresses. When I look at the beginning of our career, I'm like, we're in $20 to $30 dresses for sure. Like we would binge on the bra. That was probably 15, oh, $20. And you guys were wearing like tiny little pieces, but you're having to be an athlete. Like yeah. I think that that's so important to remember is like you were professional wrestlers. You were athletes first and foremost. And yes. then it's like, what are, what are you taping yourself in there to make sure you're not falling out? Right. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> and I was taped dead, but it was so hot in that arena. And what happened, I was sweating and some of the tape moved. That happened a lot. They would, they started to make us like have the nippies and then like make sure you were taped up before you went out there. But you would sweat so much that it was like, of course. yeah, guys tapes. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Free, let's talk about your wedding dress. Can we? Oh my goodness. Special. She loved it. So she still talk about it. And my grandmother's wedding picture was right there. Oh my gosh. And, uh, that was really special to me. And I had this belt and I wore this really cool headpiece. Such a cool look. Yeah. And I just thought, you know what? You know, I hope Bertie will maybe want to wear yeah. something with it. And then this dress, I hope Bertie does move it too, but we were filming in Austin, Texas. And I had just gotten engaged. So it was our 30th birthday. That is wild. We're celebrating our 30th birthday there. And um, what they, there was this little boutique, and they're like, oh, this woman, she you know, is just starting to make wedding dresses so we can go film there. And now she's a very well known wedding dress Oh. Wow. She really listened to me. Yeah. Everything I wanted. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Something. Yeah, something with it. When when you mentioned on Total Divas, Total Bellas, how crazy is it to you guys that young girls, 
are now going, that's how I got into professional wrestling is I was watching Total Divas. I was watching Total Bellas. And when you say like, what professional wrestlers do you know? And they're like, I know the Bella Twins. I know Nikki and Brie. Like how wild is that to you guys in itself? Oh my gosh. It's so wild. Crazy. It is. But we always say we don't honor our accomplishments enough. We're just, um, like Brie and I have always kept our feet way into the ground. And we always want to be that way and always will be that way. But at times we never sit and recognize what we have done. And it's those moments that, that will happen. And we're like, oh my gosh, wow, we, we did make an impact. Like what we dreamed up is, is happened. And so it's incredible to see. And like we were in some meetings, it might've been, I don't know how long ago. And they were, they, and this is with like networks and stuff. They're like, it's so funny because when wrestling gets brought up and people who aren't familiar with the industry, they'll go, that Bella Twin wrestling? 1,000%. Yeah. That is like the common term. It's like, name five wrestlers. You're on, you guys are on that list. Yeah. For especially the Gen Zs, like the younger right. generations, like early 20s into 30s, like they were watching you guys, yeah, you know? Yeah, sure. Totally. And so it really hit me when Brie and I, we were at, when was the last Rumble we were at? It was a few years ago when Birdie was there. And so that's when some of the women that I've only knew of on NXT or who just signed the coming, but never got to see them um, because we had just had babies, pandemic, all the things. Life. Life. Life, right? Life happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were all coming up to us and telling us these things. And I was like, wow. I mean, so, you know, Rhea stood in line in Australia and took a picture with Brie and I and like Brit and like Bianca telling us her stories and I, all these women. And I was like, that is so amazing. And it also made us say, that is why we put our life on TV. Exactly. That was what we wanted to do. And even though it had good times and bad, and I think there was so much more that could have been done, that is the impact we wanted. We wanted to show the world what women wrestlers can do. and how they are motivating and inspiring. And so it just made me so happy that that is what came from it, you know? Right, and I think what Nikki and I love so much and what we always strive for is that a mother and a daughter can sit down and watch us and both relate to us. Absolutely. Yes. So since we were talking about dresses, Nikki, I want to talk about you hosting the Oscars. You were wearing this beautiful pink gown. Tell me about that process. So because it was E's Oscar brunch, uh, my stylist and I, Natalie, who's just incredible, we were just discussing that. I go, I want to look like a Sex in the City, like breakfast martini. Like nailed it. You know what I mean, right? I wanted those, especially because we are filming at the historic Hollywood, um, Roosevelt, Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. That's the vibes I wanted to give. And you know what's the last one I tried on? I tried on dresses for two hours. And it's one of those, you kind of glance out in the hanger and you're like, I don't know. And then I put it on and we were like, two hours in here we 100%. go. 100%. I was a pageant girl, so I understand okay. that. Yeah. And then I didn't know they wanted me to walk the red carpet. And all of a sudden they grabbed me and they go, we need to get you the red carpet. We want you to go take photos. And I was like, me? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. Well, me? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And that red carpet, I have walked so many red carpets. That one felt crazy special. Like I just went on there. One, it's gigantic and there's so much going on. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I watched as a child. Like it, this is the iconic Oscars red carpet. And it just, it was such a pinch me moment and like incredible. And I've really have fallen in love with hosting and have found like a new place there on TV. Welcome girl. Yeah, Welcome right, on. exactly. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and it's so fun. And so doing this stuff like with E and Barmageddon and Twin Love, um, I've loved it. And just being in this whole different world, it's just fun. And as you know, when you just grow, you start somewhere and you continue to evolve. And like, I feel like this new decade, that's where I'm evolving and enjoying, especially with Brie. Um, it's fun. And like, E's home for us. So like WWE will always be home. And E though has always been home for us. I mean, that's been our home for over a decade. And it's just crazy to still see the same people. And, and I think that's why you and I love media days so much when they send us out because we get out fun with fashion. I mean, yes. It's, that's, and that's why I've always loved the E! Network. I used to watch E! in middle school when it was right. only fashion shows. And I used to tell Brie and she would be like, whatever. I go, Brie. I remember this exactly, seventh grade. 
<laughs> I go, I'm gonna be a supermodel one day. Oh my gosh. Standing there, 5'5", five, five, super athletic. Geez. I ended up growing one more inch. And I'm quoted in the yearbook. Thank God it was middle school, not high school. Okay. Um, what are you gonna be when you're older? And, and you said supermodel. Yeah, and did I mention the E-Network? Something. So when we ended up doing a reality show with the E-Network, to me it was like, oh my gosh. Like that's how I got to know Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell. Bonnie Schiffer. Yeah, and Kate Moss. We're like walking those runways. Like, and I looked at them and I thought, one day, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. right. But Thank you, God. But you are in your own version as well. Totally. Like, right. you're walking red carpets. Yeah. You're like killing the game. So you are your own version of your own supermodel. Totally. Truly. Right. Yeah. That is true. That's a great I love yeah, that, right? Yeah, that's great. Speaking of Barmageddon and like you've done everything from Barmageddon to America's Got Talent, is there a look from one of those shows that you really love that felt authentic that you were just like, I am in my moment? Oh gosh, a lot. So one, um, if I talk Barmageddon, um, Brie and I grew up country girls. Like we were in rodeos. I mean, we had horses growing up, we were cowgirls and being in Barmageddon, like I'm reliving my country days, like my cowgirl days. Like I rocked a shirt one day on set and everyone loved it because it said, um, I was I was country before country was cool. Yes. And we laugh about that, right? Like you used to kind of hide your countryness, yes. right? Back in the day because it wasn't cool and now everyone is, but I love it because country is so chic and hot. Like I'm so happy people are recognizing that. It's making that. a comeback. Look at a Beyonce. Huge, yes. And so a lot of those looks, I really have felt like me in, like I'm like living in my moment. Tell your energy. My awesome. energy, way yeah, up. way up. Because it's like, I feel like me. And then I brought actually the AGT Extreme Pants. Amazing. Because when we were filming, they didn't know where they were gonna put acts. So they go get ready to live in these. And these are actually, they were mine that I brought. So out of everything the stylist had, I go, these were just so me, extreme meets fashion. Um, and I don't I don't have the white shirt, but finally in the finale, I gotta change my look, but this was it. Oh my goodness. I lived in these. I lived in these for They're good five quality. weeks. Great quality. It worked and it was to the point where people were like, would ask me about my AGT Extreme Pants. Like, oh, that look you had? I'm like, literally, they were like in branding. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I need to make an action figure out of this because that was you just should. a look with the straight hair. If here. anybody's hearing this out here, yeah. right? Yeah. So, action figure in this, please. Such as that. I know, right? Yeah, Honestly, we, yeah. we can make it happen. Zach Ryder, are you hearing this? Yeah, 100%. Are you hearing this? So yeah, this, and I loved it though. I was comfortable every day. And I think that was like Barmageddon and AGT Extreme. That was the evolving version of me because I still got to be my sexy tomboy in AGT Extreme and then on Barmageddon. And my looks, when I feel my best, there's a comfort to it. So whether it's my Nike kicks, cowboy boots, this I was in, and everyone will laugh because I the whole time wore these brown Prada boots that I literally have had for what, 10 years, yeah. the brown ones. I wear them in the airport. I wear them everywhere and I have a they're few so Louis Vuitton, but they're so comfy and they're super high and people are like, how? And I go, because I can. Like on AGT Extreme, when I had to climb that super high platform that I was shaking and terrified, I was in Prada boots this high. Like I'm so lucky I didn't fall over yeah, and that was it. Even though I was strapped in. But, but you, yeah, you were in your own comfort element. Exactly, loved it. Brie, before we get too far away with gowns, when you guys were presenting an Emmy, you have this like stunning white, it has a rose in the middle that you were wearing for the Emmys. It was fantastic. It was grace, it was elegance, it was everything. You both looked stunning. Mm. Oh, like, thank you, but that One of my favorite timeless. looks ever. It was beautiful. Tell me some of that inspiration. So I, we have the same stylist, and um, she, you know, she stylists for Ashley Simpson and Jessica Simpson, and that's kind of how I found her, because I love Ashley's style so much. And I was like, oh, I love you know, she always tags Natalie Zane and so I'm like, I need to reach out to her. So she's been styling us since before I had three. So she was like, you gotta be careful with this one, but three, this is a designing room. And I kind of looked at her and she goes, you don't know. And I'm like, no, but he's famous for that. The putting the flower. But when I put it on, I instantly felt like I was in the Like I just You radiated. Like, it was beautiful. You know, she didn't. She literally couldn't eat all day. Wait, there was a photo of Dua Lipa. I don't know if you guys ever saw it, but I don't know what award show she was at. And she was like sitting in her dress, but her legs were straight. And she was doing one of these numbers. And I'm like, that is so relatable. If you've ever. So, oh my gosh. Where do you find inspiration behind Bonita Bonita? Oh, so that's our Parisian side. Um, Brie and I, growing up, have always been so drawn 
to not only old fashioned Hollywood, but to France and anything French, but like, and Italian, but like late 1800s, like that era of women and the fashion and the look. So when we started to create the look of Bonita Bonita, we didn't want to just do a typical, you get a design, you put it on. We found she's, yeah, she's a Parisian artist right there in Paris. And she was doing artwork for like Vogue magazine. That's where she, you'll see a lot of her stuff. And she's just, she's an artist. So she did our label, had never done a wine label before. And now she's, and we even have her artwork hanging up, but she, we won't do anything without Marco. Like Margot, is the person that we do all our designs for because she draws in that way. Like you feel old school France, old world, like draws you in, makes you feel like chic, sexy, beautiful, like all the things that it was important for us to bring that into Bonita Bonita. Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit about the past, and we've talked about some about the future, but what do you guys have going on now? Like, what's important to you now? Besides family. kids, yeah. Um, family life, and I would say, you know, as entrepreneurs, Bonita Bonita. For sure. That is our baby. It's the one thing that we have owned in our entire lives, just us. So... Even the WWE days, they thought it was just gonna be a passion project and we got approval to do it and they signed off like, go have fun and- Isn't that funny how that works? Relatable, so funny. yes. Oh yeah. And I remember it started to get big and there was conversations where like, no, 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 you signed, like it's all ours. Yes. Um, and it's just been amazing to watch it grow. And, and what I love about it is, Brie and I have done it slow, but we've done it our way. And it's all us. And we're getting to a point where we're starting to grow really big, but it's been an incredible eight year journey. And it brought our families here to Napa Valley. And it's been a magical place for us to raise the kids. It's an incredible family community. Our kids are always outside, they're learning. And we grew up farmers, like farmer girls. And now our kids are picking grapes. Like we've already had the boys out there harvesting. They started it too. And it's just neat to have that. Um, Brie and I just, we were meant for that. And what I think I love about Napa Valley is we are fulfilling our farmer side of us, but it's also bougie. Yeah. So it has this elegant the best side. Of both worlds. It really yeah. is. And I think that's why it was drawing us for so long. You could tell it was like bringing our souls here. And the minute we got here, Brie and I are like, this is the rest of our lives. Yeah. Well, and I think too, life goes really fast. Like all of a sudden, boom, we just turned 40. And I'm like, what? I still feel like I'm so crazy. <laughs> and when it comes to work, like we wanted to bring our passions into work. Yeah. And it's like, what are our passions? Well, everyone's like, yeah, of course, the bell is the wine. We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, we just kind of looked at our like passions and we're like, how can we make that a business? Right. And it's been so lovely. Yeah. And you know, her and I like, our goal is to get our wines part of Paris Fashion Week. Right. Because we want an excuse to be at Paris Fashion Week. And we're like, Amen, sister. You know, yes. You know, like, we're like, why not? Like, New York is one of the And I said, like, you know, we even just with art, like, we want to bring in our artists here and do a big gallery because the things we love, we know our wine can be the foundation. Sure. We kind of, like, just like in wrestling, we've done this in the wine industry. We like to shake it up and do it our way and pave our own road of something new. And we've done that so far in this industry. And when we came on the scene, it really shook people up. Like we even had people calling ABC to make sure our licenses were legit because they were trying to shut us down. Yeah, and that's when you're like, oh, we shook you yeah. a little bit. But we have all these ideas that not only make our brand, because it's not just for the boomers. We want to be more pop culture and we have become that way. And we have ideas of where wine is cool, but wine is also appreciated because we know the work that goes into one bottle. Um, and then also TV stuff. Like we found a home in some TV stuff, but what's great about being an entrepreneur is we get to be picky and, and podcasting. For sure. We knew this is where we want to end our careers. We want to have a daytime show. And if we want to drink wine, we're going to drink wine. Yes. Yeah, we were like, that yeah. was so, yeah, yes. right? And um, 
It was, yeah, and just think, like, new on the scene, I'm wearing, like, Hervé Leger in the morning. I get told, like, so that's not a daytime dress. And I'm like, you know what, whatever. whatever. I'm Nikki Bella, I'm so. I Yeah, <laughs> I'm in Louis Vuittons and Hervé. I was just excited. I mean, told you of the course. season one, we're media promoting. I'm in Hervé Leger and Louis Vuittons. You, you I gotta made it. You gotta turn it up. You gotta yeah, turn up the right? heat. Girls, it has been so fun so and fun. so amazing. Thank you for welcoming me into your space. Like, I am so thankful and lucky to be here. And thank you again for being on Threads. It's been such oh a my joy. God, and thank keep it up. Your show's so kick ass. Oh, thank you. What you're doing for women and their stories. Thank you. And so, thank you. Just, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Yay. Thanks, you too. <laughs> oh, oh, I have oh, to. I have to spend I some mean, time here. Yes. 100%. It's the last oh, I will be back. Definitely. Uh-huh.